my name is Lloyd Everett, and you are listening to Monday Morning Critic. Lloyd, uh, Lloyd so I know mom is Jamaican and, and, and your dad is, is Welsh. Um, I've been watching this show on Apple TV Plus called Welcome to Wrexham. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. No, what is it? Uh, they bought he's they bought a Welsh football team, um, Wrexham. Oh and, yeah, I do know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, Ryan yes. Reynolds bought a, a Welsh football team. Yes, yes, and, and it's, it's just so much fun to watch unfold, and it, it, it gives me an introduction to Wales, and it, it's just so much fun for a lot of reasons. Got you. Yeah, he should have bought Barry Town. That's what I'm at. <laughs> and I would have come so back. I would have come back <laughs> for the people of Barry Town. Uplift us. Take Lloyd, us to it's, League. it's interesting how that works, right? Because a lot of people in the states don't know how the you know the the leagues work, right? You know whether you get regulated or delegated. Like, it's it's just like you get moved up or moved down depending on your record. Yeah, it's yeah. So interesting yeah. how that works. There's so many levels to it. Yeah, no, the the pyramid schemes is huge, but I think Wrexham's like, you know, it's a it's a really cool club, really. Um, yeah, yeah. It's always they're fighting at the top of the Welsh Premier League. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good buy, but again, he, he could have bought Barry Town and then <laughs> we had a star man up front. Um, you know, before we get into to, to your life and into your um career, um, I did want to do a um little bit of a dive into your uh, social media Instagram. Are you a Taekwondo guy, a MMA guy? Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. Yeah, um, yeah, I studied it for like ten years when I was quite young. Though I was like, I think I started at like six years old. And then by the time I got to 16, I still like dabbled in it, but um, I became a bit more interested in the other sports I loved, which was football, soccer, as you, as you call it, and, yeah. and boxing. Wow. But, How, do you, do, do, would you, would you um, embrace the opportunity to ever use it in an acting situation, you know, because obviously you're athletic, clearly. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, to be honest with you, um, not many opportunities have come around. Um, and so I've written a TV series um, incorporating all those um, attributes of myself, which um, I'm now in talks with uh, about making. So nice. Yeah, there just isn't that like, well, I don't know. No, there is. There, 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 are, there are films from here and there. But yeah, for me, I'm, I'm definitely want to be using and utilizing this, this skill for sure. Now, I know you had a big move recently. Was that career-based? Was that just focusing more on your career? Is the, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. I was focusing more on my career. Um, and, yeah, just because, I, obviously, I'm an actor, but, like, I've got so many projects and ideas that I want to make, and I just felt like America was the best place as well. Um, yeah. Come and live and, and just, like, fulfill the potential of all those things I've got in mind. Yeah, and it's not an easy move, right? I mean, I, I get it. You know, you have to do it, and it makes perfect sense. But, I mean, yeah. you have to kind of pick up and leave everything that you're kind of – you have to get out of that comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been challenging. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. You know, your, your friends and your family, like everyone who sort of, you know, like a, either around the corner or a phone call away, um, yeah, I seem very distant at the moment. Um, I mean, LA is – Obviously, I've only been here for a very, very, very short time, but it's very, very beautiful. It's hot. It's lovely. The people are friendly. I'm just starting, you know, I'm just starting my sort of new chapter here. Um, and it is hella expensive as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, LA is crazy out here, boy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, we just have to sort of like get involved. And, and, and yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's a bit, definitely a long term um, situation. So, yeah, you're clearly invested in yourself. Uh, who is a like action star that you um you know taking? I'm thinking of your Taekwondo background. Who is a um, action star that you really admire? Somebody who can use both, like a Jason Statham. Like, uh, I mean, there's so was, many names. Yeah, I was actually I was so my dad um, sort of tricked me into believing this, but I was really big into Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme and Bruce Lee were my two and a bit of Rocky as well, because Rocky was a huge influence in my house. Yeah. Um, but with Jean-Claude Van Damme, my dad actually told me that it was him, because I was, what, three, four years old when I first saw his movie. Yeah. And my dad looked like Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know? <laughs> so I believed it was my dad for at least, like, two, three years, you know? And, I was like, <laughs> and, so, and so, like, most kids, you know, they want to grow up to emulate their parents. And so I think that was really the seed. Um 
which made me want to kind of be in movies, which is quite strange and surreal considering like now the type of acting that I love and the type of storylines that I like to go into, but it actually started from, from that, from just wanting to be like my dad. Well, how sweet is that? Like, it's sweet, but it's also funny because of the fact that you were walking around for a while thinking that Jean Claude Dom was your it was your dad. That's great. Yeah, and, and when and when and like this is how the child brain is incapable of processing certain things. Which is like, I remember I watched a movie where he went to prison. At the end, he's gone. He's arrested. Yeah, and I broke down and I cried because I was like, "Well, my dad's not going to make a movie again," <laughs> even though he's about to walk in the house. Yeah, you know what I mean. About an hour, yeah, 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 yeah. Still couldn't put two and two together. That's crazy. Uh, That's funny. So yeah, he's yeah. So he's like, he was a big influence and inspiration because of the sort of kicks and the style and you know those. I I guess movies now around action have really changed. If you're asking me to do what I'd like to do now, it would be more say, I don't know, be more like kind of. Well, the mixture of like high level drama, character and acting with the fighting. So I think the closest to that is probably like a born, you know, like a born. Yeah, film. yeah, like, yeah. I think they nail those two aspects of it. Like, yeah, really, really well. yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, the Quentin Tarantino movie? Yeah, I have. Yeah. What do you think about the Bruce Lee situation? You mentioned Bruce Lee, you know, where Bruce yeah. Lee and Brad Pitt kind of, do you think that was blatantly disrespectful? Cause I think Quentin loves Bruce Lee. I think it was just, he was clearly being over the top, but I know Bruce's family was offended and some people didn't like the way that yeah. Bruce Lee was portrayed. I mean, look, I, I, I think, um, no one wants to see Bruce Lee beat up in a movie. That's one of the, yeah. I think that's, <laughs> one, that's one thing. Like I was a massive fan. I was like, Whoa, what's going on here? But yeah. I feel like Tarantino's like, he's like, uh, you know, everything he does is with a magnifying glass. So I think he, even in yeah. an interview, he told me that like, you know, Bruce Lee was like kind of difficult to work with, you know, like he would actually kick the, um, the stunt men like for real. And, <laughs> and so like, he just sort of like, sort of created a story around, you know, like everyone has, as an image and what we see from the outside, but Tarantino seems to sort of unpick things that we may not be so like uh, so wary of. So, right, yeah, right. man. I mean, it's all, it's, it's all it's all to do with um, artistic interpretation. Um, but yeah, I didn't really pick up too much. Like, I didn't really go in 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 on it um, because I understand like anyone who's like huge mega fans, and I would say that I am, but I just. I put it in the realm of like comedy, really. I, I, of I, course, I agree. I agree. But you know, some people like you know, like you say. Well, people thought like, people were like, well, Bruce Lee would never go out and call somebody out. Like, I totally agree with that. Of course, he wouldn't. That's what makes it funny because he yeah. would not do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah know? Exactly. But, so I mean, yeah, I don't really take too much umbrage up with it, but um, decent, decent film. So in many of your posts, you have a kick pose that you do. It's pretty funny to see. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, the dragon, the dragon pose. Um, yeah, man, that's just my that's just my little thing. It's my little signature. Hit him with the hit him with the dragon. So that got me thinking about Karate Kid, and got me thinking mm -hmm. about Cobra Kai. Are you uh, first of all, what what's your take on the original Karate Kid, and to, have you followed it through to Cobra Kai? Love Karate Kid. Yeah, um, yeah, huge fan, but. I haven't actually i've say I, i've sort of put that to the side actually yeah yeah um i will get into it though i will watch it sure um some series i'm quite funny with it i'm like let me just let that build up and then yeah it makes sense I do, i've done that. i did that with the boys i get it yeah, yeah. and then i'll have I a good, good old binge and I, and I feel the same around that to be honest so um, yeah i'll definitely yeah. definitely watch it that way well, your Instagram is a very is a very very fun follow. Um, so tell me about the um, uh, Royal Welsh College of, of Drama um, and Music. W what was your time like there, Lloyd? Did you pick up a lot? Yeah, man, I, I thought it was a great it was a great school. Um, I had I left with like best friends. I met some great teachers there. I sort of found myself, I guess, like um, when I first started drama school, I was really really struggling. I was really really struggling and this is something i'm actually gonna i'm gonna start um possibly a new uh business to help people with what i was struggling with which was my dyslexia 
you see, because I came from an improvisational background, so everything I was doing was just more about instinct. It wasn't necessarily learning dialogue lines. And I just, my brain just didn't have the um, capabilities of wiring to sort of like do the job, do the skill, which right. is just, the skill is just memory, right? Right. Um, but I didn't know, my brain didn't know how to retain, how to learn it. So it took me years to find out a little method for myself. But what did happen, which was the great thing about that drama school, was at the end of every year, you had to put on your own play. So you had to put on your own play, you had to write it, direct it. It could be about anything you want. You could go up there and just act like a duck for 20 minutes if you want. It doesn't matter what it was. It's it's just, you know, if you did do that, I'd probably get a tell remark, but <laughs> it, it just didn't, it, it, it didn't matter what it is. It all comes from you. And that's when I came to my, into my own. I wrote a story about um, a guy with physical Tourette's who was, um, who created his own house, who created his own world in his house because he, he had, he also couldn't leave. So he had like a beach in his house. He had like a, a beautiful garden inside his house. He, he created a nightclub inside of his house and then mm. plays about a person coming over to interview the winner of this poem competition and knowing, unknowingly uh, not realizing that this guy is like, you know, he's from a different sort of realm and the way, and, and then I won't spoil the ending, but um, it gets quite dark. Yeah. It's all spoil the ending because I could put something more into that. But um, yeah, basically drama school was great, man. I really had a good time. I was very, very lucky because we were all very friendly and it wasn't that kind of like, kind of normal competitive um, sort of, you know, drama schools usually, you know, attract that kind of like behaviors of people like, yeah, man, just super competitive and just everyone very individual on their own, on their own journey. And, but this was a bit different. This was like, we were a bit more like a family. So I, I really have um, great memories from that time. Yeah. And there's a lot of actors that do battle dyslexia. How, how do you do it? How do you, how do you get around that Lord? I, I can't put my hand, I can't put my head around uh, that. My, my method has now changed a lot over the years, but I, I basically created my own language, my own pictorial language. I, I was told wow. that like, you know, the, the, the Chinese language is actually pictorial. Right. Right. Characters. So, and yeah. Yeah. So I basically changed, yeah, I created my own language for myself and for years and years and years and years, that's how I did it. And then my brain just suddenly started to remember dialogue much, much easier. Um, so I've had loads of different methods through the years, which is, this is why I wanna sort of create something to help other people. But at the moment, I'd say, because I've practiced in these other ways, now I can just pretty much learn it in a normal way. Right. Just look at it. That's pretty amazing that you thought that, that the way you kind of conquered that, because I can't believe that was easy for you to develop. Yeah, no, that was a really, really hard time in, in, in my uh, career, I'd say. And that's really why I want to help because I know what it feels like when people struggle with that thing. And then they internalize that as them, like they're not, they're not good or they may go to an audition and, you know, they may mess it up because it's, they're worried about the lines. And this is, a, you know, you can't do the job without knowing the lines, of course, but um, I really want to be able to sort of help people overcome that as well and chop off the time that it took me, it right. took me years. So if yeah. I can save some time in someone's life, let's do that's it. That's huge. That's huge. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you've done some things, but let's talk about the absolutely wonderful uh, The Sandman. How'd you, how did you um, get into that part and how did you um, get that role? Like, was, it, was it a drawn out process for you? Um and it was one of the nicest processes really of like um i had no actually no no go back to the beginning so i i auditioned for a different role to begin with i remember that was in the summer can you uh, say which role that was oh which role was it it's okay if you don't remember yeah i'm not entirely sure yeah, which yeah, role yeah. it was yeah yeah i think all of them were up for grabs it was a few yeah. different roles so i think gotcha. I maybe one or two yep um <clears throat> and then I didn't hear anything for a couple of months. And then they asked me to audition for Hector. Uh, and then I did the Hector audition, sent it in. And what was nice about this was I completely forgot about it. I was like, I did that months ago. And usually when you don't hear anything for a, a certain amount of time, you know, it leaves your mind and you go on to the next thing. Yeah. And I just had the phone call and they were like, they really wanted to play Hector Hall. And I was like, brilliant, man. This is awesome. Cause I just 
love the sound of the show. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly the kind of things I want to be doing. So I was really, really, really grateful and happy to be a part of it. Yeah, and it's crazy because the, the comics and, and the, the Netflix show are a bit different because in the comics, Hector's um, relatives are, are Hawk, um, Hawkman and, and Hawk, uh, the, the female version of Hawk, and Lita has Wonder Woman roots, but I, I feel like in the show, they kind of change that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like we don't really get into the parents and the sort of those links. They're sort of like... Yeah, they're not. The, the show doesn't go down that line, but I have no idea in terms of like a season two, a season three, a season four, five, and, and beyond. Um, yeah, I definitely think they're going to make more of them. I hope so, anyway. But I don't know how much of that DC world, because to be honest with you, like they called it the infilmable comic. It's like they tried it so many times in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah, and um. So how they mish and mash the stories to, to work together for a screenplay for something that was going to be able to be filmable and um, and have longevity, yeah, they they definitely like made those kind of story beats so that it does have that flow. Um, but who knows what's going to enter in let's say you know if, if there is a season two, three, four, or five, you may see those characters and those parents emerge. Yeah, and, and Lloyd, everyone that um, d does comics that I know that that's into comics. I mean, I am too, but like I, I don't read comics. You know, I'm, I love the movies, but I don't you know delve into it. They say the Sandman is the best. The people that I know say Sandman is the best comic that's ever existed. Oh man, I mean, yeah. you mean as, as 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 a comic book, yeah? As a comic, and that's why yeah. so many people were drawn and love. It, yeah, it, it, go, it goes to what you were saying about it was really hard to get all the pieces to work because it's mm -hmm. a very complicated comic. It's, there's a lot of moving parts you know that's it yeah 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 i mean from i wasn't aware of it so much until i got the role so i was like then i got the comics to sort of like study and get into it and yeah i was kind of blown away by it as well to be honest with you it's just so detailed and there's so many universes within universes i'm like well neil gaiman's a real brainchild like yeah i have yeah. all these characters and all these lives and all these like you know when you have like a character that you've written like these characters have like a family tree. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's talk about like creative. Like, how do you even put that together? Yeah. So like his brain is like oof, is is very can contain and, and create a lot. Well, if one thing remains have men, though. Yeah, one thing that remains consistent, if they if your child is who I think he is, he is probably the biggest character in the show, uh Daniel. And I'll, I'll leave it there. The your and Lita's um child is an enormous figure in the comics and i don't know if yeah. they're gonna go down that road with this but yeah yeah exactly i don't know i have no idea i have no idea yeah yeah it's it's, it's a pretty impressive thing uh it's a wonderful show for so many reasons um i gotta tell you though um hector's arc is sad as hell it's sad it's yeah it's really it's heartbreaking man like it's like I'm... this poor guy is tormented he's tortured yeah i'm glad that came across you know um yeah, like someone being in love, being, you know, in quotations, alive and having a second chance and then it getting taken away from you when you can actually create your own dream life. Yeah, man, it's it's sad. And 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 you know, it was it was lovely, you know, that relationship that we worked. Yeah, we worked at length, I think, to so because uh, you know, like as an actor, you know, you, um, I'm so big on when you have relationships, friendships, um, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever it may be, is like being very specific in how our body language and how we are with those people, and and, and making sure that that is also on screen because. You we, we just take we always take it for granted, but you're different in front of your mum, you're different in front of your friends, you're different in front of a different group of friends, and different like even yeah. unconsciously, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, like making that relationship real was like the most um that for me was a success. No man, you're you're phenomenal in it. Like and and and, and you know, kudos to you for that. And it, it's just Thanks like a, yeah, yeah. It's like everyone watching knows how your story ends, except you and Lita. No, don't know. I mean, you know, what I'm saying like everyone yeah. knows that this can't go anywhere, except 
you know, Hector is just like, you know, hey, I, I, I you know, he's in he's in this like bliss. And it's so sad when he gets pretty much dissolved back to where he's supposed to be. I yeah, guess. yeah. No, thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that that had an impact on you because that's basically, you know, I think that's probably the best feeling I get when I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that person really felt that moment. And so, yeah, that means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, when when you when it eventually unfolds and you see everything put together, how impressed were you at the final product? Yeah, really impressed actually. Um Yeah, I was really impressed. I liked I liked that sort of which is very hard to do. Like when you have say characters some very human, some with that other edge to them like say dream you know like he's of a different world and then you have other characters that are whatever devil ghosts um all these things and then you have these just like i said like these like normal run like these kind of normal people as well right. and is i think that's very hard to pull off it's very hard to pull off all these different types of characters and and create a world or a few worlds where there's enough consistency that is like that makes it feel real for you know for, for what you're watching right um, right right what i mean by that is like if you're doing a play best way to describe it like if you're doing a play right and it's 10 people in the cast and you're in 1950s america this is the play, this is the area. And, but one of the actors or one of the actresses has decided to do something to bring their performance out in a different way, but it just doesn't fit that world. And so it stands out in a bad way. Um, so to, to just to knit everything together, all those characters together, I think is, yeah, is very, 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 very well done. And I think that does come down to, um, uh, casting and alan who wrote it as well who, who created the screenplay and, and produced it he was just very he was he was on the floor a lot so he was with the actors a lot he was with so this is alan heimberg um he was with the actors he was with the directors he was on and some scenes we kind of improvised as well we just some scenes well did this feel right did that feel right and it was a a real detail to attention of you know we're not moving on until this is correct and yeah. to get that um, light, well, get that as a privilege in movies, you know, or in TV, right. it's like time is of the essence. So um, I think all that time and hard work they put in, it paid off. And, and, and weird question for you, really random weird question. Why why get rid of the accent for the role? Is that something they were insistent upon? Was that your choice? Because he had, because Hector is has you do a wonderful like I feel like working accents is very difficult like I could never do it so I'm blown away when actors can do it you know yeah uh, wh whose choice was that um again I think it was just the world that, gotcha. that was yeah gotcha. you know like yeah um and I think that's yeah where they were very specific on this that and the other but it, it really for me it was really good to do because you know it was the first American that I've played and now i'm in america and i'll be playing a lot more of them and yeah. here's like my my first one so for a first one i think um it's a good one it was a great one and for your process right you talked about your process for for you know kind of getting around having to read lines because of your dyslexia how, how do you how do you get into another accent is it something you work on is there somebody you pattern your voice after is, is that a whole process too lloyd yeah i would say like uh, what i try to do is like speak like myself yeah but with the accent and then depending on what the accent is um yeah for me it's about learning it learning it so much and then get to a point where you can just go to the shop and you can start speaking and ordering stuff in this accent and if no one bats an eyelid you've got it if people look ah. at you a little bit off smart you need, to, you need to do a little bit more work i'd say yeah, yeah, that, that's a great that's a great method of, of, of finding out. Um, two episodes I wanted to get your your take on, and thank you for all this time, Lloyd. Um, right. One I love. There's two that I love. I love the whole show, but there's two that I really love. One is the collectors, where where Hector is just a powerful episode. We talked a little bit about that, where you know Lita has to watch Hector, you know, just just disintegrate, you know, and Dream sends him back to wherever he he's supposed to be. Uh, that was a heartbreaking um, episode. Do you realize how emotional that is when you're filming it, Lloyd? 
Um, you know what? I did. I, I think, um, yeah, I think those moments are like, you got to go there, you know, you got to commit, you got to yeah. commit to, yeah. to what it would be, to what it would look like and feel, uh, feel like to lose someone who you loved. And yeah, like, you know, you commit to those moments and those feelings but for me, my process is always as well. Like, it's like I want a blueprint, but I don't want to know exactly how I'm going to do it. Right. Because let the let some let something work through me. Um, let me be unaware of something, so I surprise myself. But definitely have an idea of where I want to get to. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's well said. Uh, the other episode, have, have you ever seen Meet Joe Black, Lloyd? It's a movie with Brad Pitt. Yes, Hitt. yes. So, so the episode that I was in, another, the other uh, episode that I was in tears with was uh, The Sound of Her Wings. Um, Kirby Hall Baptiste is effing unbelievably awesome in this episode. Um, yeah, um, I have to say, you know, her as death being just like very much like Brad Pitt and Meet Joe Black, like you would never think death looks this beautiful, you know, like, like Kirby or Brad do. Yeah. But, and the way she's just said, you know, there's no negotiating, there's no extra time. Like you're coming with me, but in the sweetest way possible. Like mm. you realize what she is, and it's just, I was blown away. I was just like, freaking, this is amazing. And, and there's yeah. then there's the angle of the man who lives forever, and it's just like I couldn't. I, I it took me days to digest that episode, Lloyd. Yeah, I think that episode why it strikes people is because we all know we're gonna die, and no one knows what's gonna happen when you do. And we, there's all, I think all of us have that secret, fe like that, that, that secret desire that, oh man, wouldn't it be great if someone was just like, just like that turns up with a smile on their face and you know, you're going to be okay. You know, you're going to the other side, but you know, ultimately there is life after death. I know there's not death, maybe something I don't have to be scared of. And I think that is what that episode does. It like, it, um, quiets down the fears of death. Yeah. Because it puts death in a, a kind of there's a there's a comfort there, isn't there? When you watch this, yeah, because she's so, like she's just like this stunning you know actor. You're not expecting it, and the people that approach her are already gone. Like it's yeah. the way it's done. It's and then, and then there's the 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 angle of the man who lives forever, and that that's a whole different train of thought, right? It's almost the opposite. The guy who's living forever, and then you're seeing these other people lose their lives. You know, just the way life is. Yeah. It's almost like a it's almost like a contrast of of beliefs and thinking about things. Lloyd, I, I don't know. I I could do a whole podcast on this on this episode. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no like absolutely, that, you know? absolutely. No, it's a very very deep, interesting episode. I think the one for me that stood out, and I think the one that was really really big for a lot of people was that um, cafe episode. Ah, uh, yeah, because I think that that in itself. Just the idea, actually. I don't think I've ever seen it. Just like, um, I mean, I've seen it in 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 ways maybe t more comedic, when you can't lie, when you tell the truth. Um, the invention of lying, I think, a really really funny Ricky Gervais movie. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, like that. That was, oh, it was just the tension in that whole episode was just extraordinary. That whole serial killer angle, Lloyd, was like I was not expecting it, but I ended up loving it. You know what I'm saying? That copy, yeah. I was like, what's going on here. It's like a, it really is a convention of serial killers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. It's, yeah, the way it kind of, and that's what I mean with the characters, how they're like to create. There's so many worlds within worlds. That's why yeah. it's such a massive epic thing to take on because it's not like you're as, as amazing as the Sopranos is you know that's the one world that's the Sopranos right right you know you're not going soprano you know and then there's a, a, a you know a multicultural family this family this family this family it's more about this one what? <laughs> yeah. yeah you're right you're, you're absolutely right um what what has your life been like since this came out yeah man I mean when I dropped that, sorry, when the Sandman came out, um, yeah, I was just like, you know, the producers and the directors, and I spoke to everybody, and 
they love it, you know, because you forget once you film something, you forget because there's so much time in between it coming out. Yeah. Um, but no, it's been really, really good for me, man. And I've just done ADR on a new show that um that's going to be coming out in October, and this is actually probably like this next role is my this next role is completely different because it's like it's very rich in its realism and that kind of like drama and this is what I've been um, heading towards doing and, and this is the kind of stuff I really really want to be putting my heart and soul into so I did some ADR and I, I saw some of the footage today and I was like well, okay this is this is very interesting I'm really looking forward to this one coming out Lloyd uh, for, those, for those listening or watching explain ADR so ADR is when um, uh, say for instance there's like noise over a line that you're saying. So you might be saying, oh, where are you today? And then someone's like, there's a seagull squeaking or a hammer. And then you just got to like go into the studio and like redo the line basically because gotcha, gotcha. Get, it, get it, get it clear. So yeah, I did a few of those today and yeah, man, that is, this is like, okay. I just break it down the synopsis really quickly for you. So it's about, my family and one of my brothers is he's actually not alive he um he overdosed and so this other kid out of the blue confronts my family and he's a spitting image of my dead brother and says i'm your brother yeah. but my mum's like you don't have another brother and and then so it's this mystery unraveling of who is this guy and then as the mystery unravels, it just gets the rabbit hole goes, goes deeper. Oh, deeper. that sounds awesome. I'm, I'm already all in on this. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. No, it's really, really well, What can you say about when it drops or is there a network? Is there, how so, yeah. It? So it's actually going to be on in the U in the U S. Um, so it's a BBC drama. So it'll be out in October. Um, I think it's the 24th of October in the UK. And then it comes over, on the two channels. I know it's going to be in America on PBS, yep. but it's also going on a streamer. Um, I think it's a new streamer. Okay. I don't want to put it out there just in case, but what I'll do is I'll I'll send you the message so I know exactly the stream is coming sure, out. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, but it's a new one. So it's not a Netflix or a Disney or an Amazon. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll send you over the link once, uh, once, I, once I know what it is. Yeah, Lloyd, I got to tell you, I, I'm an enormous fan, man. Like you, you, you had me hooked for for life. Now I got to follow you, and I want to see what your next projects are. I'm really Thanks excited. I man. really, really appreciate that. I think you're gonna love this next one, though, man. This next one is. I am all in. Like I am so into like 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 thriller dramas like that. Like yeah, yeah. I'm in, man. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited for your future too. It's gonna be bright. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Lloyd, thanks, thanks for coming on. on. And down, down the road, come back on. I would love to have you on. Oh, I'd love it too, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Derek Thomas and Monday Morning Critic Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, you can also connect with Monday Morning Critic on Instagram and Facebook, MDM Critic on Twitter, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found. All episodes available, www.mmcpodcast.com.